Thor director, Taika Waititi, has an unusual upcoming project. He will be bringing the American Samoa national football team to Hollywood. The so far untitled film is based on the 2014 British documentary Next Goal Wins, which followed American Samoa as it attempted to win its first game since joining FIFA in 1998. The story centred on the quixotic campaign to qualify for the 2014 World Cup Finals. Despite being ranked the worst team in the world by FIFA, and having lost all 29 of their previous matches. In those games, they conceded 236 goals, including 31 against Australia in a single match in 2001. That result, 31-0, remains a world record in international football. Now, there seemed little chance that American Samoa would even score a goal, let alone win a game when they arrived in Apia, Samoa, in December 2011 to play the Oceania Football Confederation's four-team round-robin preliminary tournament for Brazil 2014 alongside Samoa, the Cook Islands and Tonga. But what followed would make headlines around the world. Now, the story really started in Coffs Harbour, on the east coast of Australia in April 2001. OFC qualification for the 2002 World Cup was about to begin with a bang. Australia, by far the strongest team in the five-team group, opened with a 22-0 victory over Tonga, a new world record that eclipsed Kuwait's 20-0 victory over Bhutan two years previously. Kevin Muscat scored four, John Aloisi five. Australia's next game was against an American Samoa side who had just lost to Fiji 13-0 after an administrative mix-up. American Samoa is an unincorporated territory of the United States, with a population of under 60,000. Although it doesn't enjoy these same privileges and rights as US states, it is still considered part of the US. But it turned out that most of American Samoa's squad were not eligible because they were Samoan citizens, a sovereign nation next door with whom American Samoa shares strong cultural links. Almost the entire squad had to be replaced by youth players, some as young as 15 but the one player who kept his place was the goalkeeper, Nicky Salapu. For the first 10 minutes, Salapu played a blinder, but once Kombutsiana scored the first, the floodgates opened. When the full-time whistle was blown, the scoreboard read 32-0. So many goals, the actual 31 had been miscounted. Archie Thompson had finished with 13, David Drillic, 8. After the game, the demoralised American Samoa coach, Tunoa Louis was left to grapple with the meaning of it all. I couldn't see any reason why they would want to score so many goals, he said. The story quickly made American Samoa famous, an and finally segment on the evening news where everyone laughed at the hapless underdog. But there would be ramifications. The tournament forced FIFA to introduce preliminary qualifying to stop such mismatched results and Australia used the experience to persuade FIFA that they should join the much stronger Asian Football Confederation instead. For the American Samoa team, there would be deeper consequences. Now that 31-0 defeat is the starting point of next goal wins. The opening credits roll with a slightly grainy video of Australia scoring again and again and again before focusing in on the prostrate figure of Nicky Salapu. Almost 10 years later, things had not got much better for American Samoa. They still hadn't won, so no one was expecting much when they turned up in Samoa in 2011. Amazingly, Nicky Salapu was still playing in goal, and they were still bottom of FIFA's rankings, but they had a secret weapon. Enter Thomas Rongen, a tough-talking Dutchman who chain-smoked filterless camels and enjoyed success as a coach of the US Under-20 team. The US Federation lent Rongen to the American Samoa FA. He discovered a team that was in bad shape. The soccer IQ is low, lower than I ever encountered, he said. Diet and nutrition is poor. You won't believe the fast food places, people just shoving it down their throats. But for Rongen, the biggest problem was psychological. The players had known nothing but crushing defeat. Salapu, he said, has some major demons going on from that 31-0 defeat. Indeed, whilst the world laughed, Salapu went back to his day job, working in a Safeways in Seattle where he would be teased about his performance. His son, too, would be taunted at school. One coping mechanism he designed was to set up an Australia vs Samoa match on FIFA on his Xbox as American Samoa wasn't on there. He would play as Samoa, unplug the second controller and run up a 50-0 scoreline. So, Rongen embarked on a month-long, sometimes fiery, crash course in knocking his players into shape. 
He also discovered, in his own words, that essentially, I have a female starting at centre-back. Jaya Salua was about to become the first transgender woman to play in a men's World Cup qualification match. She was a member of the Fafafina, a recognised third sex in Polynesian culture. And then, no one expected what happened next. At the JS Blatter Complex, a few dozen fans had come to watch American Samoa play Tonga. Rongan prowled the sidelines, directing his players to do exactly what he told them to do. And then, for the first time since being recognised by FIFA, they took the lead in a match thanks to striker Ramin Ott. With 15 minutes left, they went 2-0 up after Shalom Luani poked the ball home before being wiped out by Tonga's goalkeeper. Now, a late Tonga goal ruined the chance of Salapu's first ever clean sheet, but American Samoa held on for their first ever victory. Salapu broke down in tears as the rest of the squad ran onto the pitch. No one really knew how to celebrate because they'd never won before. So the team performed the Siva Tau, the Samoan version of the hacker, and Jaya Salua was man of the match. But then something strange happened. American Samoa began to believe. The next game was against a Cook Island team in turmoil. The FA sacked their Kiwi coach minutes before kickoff. American Samoa dominated the game but only managed a 1 1 draw. Rongan was furious afterwards but still believed they could win the tournament. And the stage was set for the decider against Samoa, who were coached by Tuona Louis, who'd been in charge of American Samoa during that fateful 31 0 defeat. Now, whoever won qualified for the next round. Rongen gave an emotional speech and sent his team out full of confidence. Midway through the second half, it was still nil-nil and Rongen played his trump card, throwing on striker Talaluvu. They were going for it. And time seemed to stop when, just with a few minutes left, Luvu chased a ball over the top. He was one-on-one -on -one with the Samoa goalkeeper. It looked like his shot was going in, but the ball bobbled and swerved and hit the post and bounced out. And Samoa rushed up the field and scored at the other end in the 90th minute. The game finished 1-0, and American Samoa had lost. At the final whistle, a tropical storm hit, and as the rain beat down, Rongen gave his final emotional speech. There were tears and one final hacker. They had lost, but their story already had a Hollywood ending. Rongen would go back to the US as the academy director of Toronto FC, and then as the coach of the Tampa Bay Rowdies before going into TV punditry. Shalom Luani, who scored the winning goal against Tonga, would end up in American football and was a seventh round draft pick for the Oakland Raiders in 2017. Jaya Salua held out hopes of making the squad for the 2018 World Cup qualification, but she was cut at the last moment. The team would win two games, but would again fall agonizingly short of reaching the next round. Now, their story will now be told by Taika Waititi. There had long been rumours that a film was to be made. The Rock was allegedly suggested for the role of Thomas Rongen, although it now looks like Michael Fassbender will play the garrulous Dutchman. But the Hollywood remake shows just how powerful American Samoa's story is, and how much we love the underdog. They'd spent their entire playing careers losing. They'd been mocked and jeered. But those few days in Samoa, in 2011, said something more. About success, the love of football, and the indomitable nature of the human spirit. The losers won.